Hello everybody and welcome to my 25th Excel 2013 tutorial and in this tutorial we're going to go on to column charts. Now we alluded to these a little bit in the last tutorial uh, and let's just hover over and see what the description is. So use this chart type to visually compare values across a few categories. Uh, now that's quite broad, it doesn't really give a best explanation. Uh, we're going to compare these different categories here. Uh, but we're also, what we're going to do is, whereas this one we're just doing the total, we're going to split out by quarters. So it just gives us a little bit of an indicator over time, uh, which is very helpful. Uh, so I'm going to select all of these, uh, and then I'm going to click on my column, and I'm going to hover over, uh, and it's going to give me examples of the different types that I want to use. Now, you see this one puts them all next to each other and shows you the, the them based on the uh, the the categories. Um, I'm actually going to go to uh, this one, the stacked column, because this is most useful in this situation. Um, and uh, I've got my categories uh, and these the wrong way around. I actually want my quarters to be on the x-axis because that the x-axis is representing the change in time. Uh, so I'm going to go up here and I'm going to go and switch row and column. And then what this does is it's putting my quarters here instead uh, and then it's putting my uh, locations down as the legend. Uh, I'm also just going to move this to the right hand side uh, just so that it looks a little bit tidier, it doesn't have both of them in the same place. Uh, I'm just going to switch back quickly to the the other type of chart that we had, um, which was this one. Uh, just to show you the difference between the two. So this one puts them all on their own kind of uh, y-axis, I guess, uh, and gives you the comparison between them. So you can kind of see, it's not as clear for this example, but you can see that London is going off on its own like that and going up. You can see that Beijing slowly going up. You can see that Delhi slowly going down. You can see that Paris is increasing, but nowhere near the height of what the others are. Uh, and you can see that Berlin is remaining at a fairly static level. Now, I... Oh, that's not what I wanted to press. Switch that back again. Uh, I'm just going to go back to the stacked so that I can show you what the stacked is. Uh, we want this one. Press OK. Uh, and then you can see that this one is going to put them on top of each other. So we got both the total. So we didn't even need to highlight the total. It's going to give us the total already. You can see that it goes in quarter three up to around about 300 or so. Uh, and or quarter four even goes up to almost 300. Uh, it doesn't give us the overall total for the year. We could pop that in if we wanted to, uh, just by extending this out here. Uh, it will give us the total as well, but obviously that skews the graph because then it's a, on a different different size to the other one. So let's just push that back down. Uh, and then you can also see the comparison between what percentage each one of them is taking up. Uh, so you can see the Delhi slowly getting smaller, you can see the Paris is slowly getting bigger, you can see the London slowly getting bigger, and that Berlin stays pretty much the same all the way through. Now if you want it to be really like a pie chart, if you go to change chart type and click on the third one along, uh, then you've got a 100% stack column. And then what this is going to do is rather than showing you the, the total value, it's going to put our y-axis as percentages uh, and it's going to show you each one as a proportion of the population. So you can see as time goes on, London takes up more of the population, Paris takes up more of the population, Berlin's slowly decreasing. If you look at Berlin, it's actually staying the same value, but proportionally it's getting smaller because the overall population is getting bigger. Uh, it's like if you don't get a pay rise when uh, inflation's going up. Yeah, your, your pay's not going down, but proportionally it is because everything's getting more expensive. Uh, you can see the Delhi's going down. Even though it's not as low as the others, it's getting proportionately lower. Uh, and New York stays relatively the same, and Beijing stays relatively the same. Uh, if we were to go to data labels, then we could put the values on there. Uh, we could go to more options and go on to here, label options, uh, uh, and we could put all kinds of crazy things on there, which I'm not going to do. Uh, 
basically I just want to turn off the data labels. So let's go to, no, data labels, go away. Why are you here? There we go, get rid of them. Uh, yeah, so those are the two different types. Uh, again, you can, uh, and before I was going on to here uh, to change these, but you can actually go just jump onto them straight up here. We can change our different types of what we want it to look like. Um, and uh, it keeps turning data labels on every time I bloody click anything. I, I hate data label logic of Excel, uh, if you hadn't got that idea already. Um, but yeah, so you can make them look a little bit fancy, but you know, graphs are for trying to paint a picture of something. Um, obviously, sometimes you want to make them look a little bit professional, but sometimes using all these weird formats can kind of just look like you, you've you got too much time on your hands. Uh, sometimes the simplest ones are the best ones, um, which is an in interesting thing, because you default oh, well, if I can make stuff look fancy, then people will be really impressed by it. But really what people are impressed by are generally what it represents uh, and how you're presenting it, presenting it yourself. Um, so yeah, don't get lured in by just spending loads of time doing a load of formatting and generally just put a decent title on it, make sure all the everything's understandable uh, and then kind of run with that. Anyway, that's going to be it for column charts. Uh, in the next tutorial, I'm going to show you how to do line charts. Uh, so moving on a little bit. So that's going to be it. Thanks for listening. Uh, if you like the video, please leave a like. If you really liked it, then please subscribe. Uh, and I'll catch you soon.